Now, this is a standard filling loop, and this filling loop can be bought at any plumber's merchants, and is basically used to fill central heating systems up, which are sealed systems. But there's a couple of flaws with this. Now, even though this system is RAS approved, we still need to disconnect the filling link after we've filled the central heating system. Otherwise, we're not complying with the water authority's regulations. Worst case scenario, we could get central heating water being sucked into our drinking water. Also, when we're coming to fill these systems, we've got to constantly be going back to the filling loop to make sure we don't over pressurize the system unless there's two of us on site when we're filling the system up. This little device here, made by Hub Distributions, is going to solve all our problems when we're filling central heating systems up. Now, even with the filling links, or well, the filling loops which are installed by the manufacturers for boilers, we've still got problems when we're coming to fill them. So this little device will overcome all those problems. It basically has a push button, and we push the push button down to fill the system. Now, you can see there's a little flow arrow there, and what this flow arrow does is tells us which way the cold water comes in and then goes out to fill your central heating system up. So make sure you install it in the right uh, orientation. Now, let's have a look at this a bit closer. So this little bit we've got here, behind this cap here, there is a little screw in there which you use an Allen key to adjust it, which you shouldn't do because this is our pressure reducing valve. So this is preset by the manufacturer to 1.4 bar. But if you do need to increase it for some reason, then you can do that. You just need to put a pressure gauge in the system somewhere if you're away from a combi boiler, because these can be installed remotely from the boilers. So the pressure reducing valve then goes into here and allows the water to come through. So when we press the button in, the water will go through into the heating system. Built into this bit here is a check valve to stop the water going back up this way and mixing central heating water in with your fresh drinking water. Now, we've got a third outlet here, but I'll show you all about that when we come to install this uh, fill valve. But we will require this little thing to be able to go in there. But like I say, I'll explain all that in a minute. Now, this valve was invented by an ex-British gas engineer called Chris Jepp. That's why it's called a Jepp valve. And he thought over 30 years ago that our standard filling loops weren't good enough. And I've been waiting for a long time to see something as good as this come out. Now, I saw this in the installer show a couple of weeks ago, and when I saw it, I thought, why have I not seen this before? This is an amazing piece of kit, and I am now going to be starting to install these on most of the jobs we're going to do. So while we're talking about installing, let's go over to one of the boilers here in the centre, and let's get this installed, and show you then exactly how this jet valve works. So... Let's get on with it.
Now let's fill the system. So I've got the cold water isolated here. I'll turn this on. I'm not going to do anything with this to see if we can hear it passing through or anything. Just uh, you should hear the water coming out the tap. So we slowly open it here. Yep, so definitely no leaks. Now all we have to do is push down this button here and it should start filling the heating system. Or we should hear it filling the heating system. So we can hear that going in <laughs> to the system. Now, you can also buy these little clips. Now these aren't designed for the end user, these are de designed for the installer. So once you've bought one of these, you don't need to buy one for every job, unless you leave it with the customer. So we need to install this because what this is gonna do is, it's gonna keep that button pressed down for us, and that means we can go around, bleed all the radiators without worrying that the pressure in the boiler is gonna go over one and a half bar. Remember these are presets of 1.4. So, they are a little bit fiddly to get on these, but uh, bear with me a sec. There we go. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get on, but once you get it on now, now I've not got rather blood in the radiators yet, I'm just seeing if this actually does knock off at 1.4. And there you go, it stopped. I can't hear the water going in now. And it's just stayed at 1.3. 1, 1 so let's get the clip off. So the clip worked a treat. And that's it, we filled the heating system up. Now you might have seen water dribbling out of here, but that's what it's designed to do. This is what's called an RPZ valve, reduced pressure zone valve. So if the pressure is greater on that side than it is on that side, then what it does is it spurts the water out. Let me try and show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the water off here, open the tap again. So now the water is coming to a stop at the sink. That means our pressure in the system is greater than our cold water pressure. If I press the button down now, you should get water dribbling out of there. See that tiny little bit? Now there's only a little bit of water coming out of here because there's a non-return valve there stopping any of the heating water come back in there. This is basically because the water is turned off. It's just basically what's left in the boiler and the pipework, why we've got these little dribbles. And this is where that little tube comes in, what I showed you at the beginning. So what we can do is install that tube there, put it down into the drain there, so when that does dribble, like that, it won't put any water on the top. But that's what it's designed to do, break, the air so we don't get any suction and suck in the central heating water out into the cold water. That's why we can leave this valve connected unlike a normal filling loop where we have to disconnect the filling link. Now let's install this little bit of clear plastic pipe. This is incredibly easy to install and it's just basically a drain pipe. So all it is bit of plastic tube with this rubber connector on the end with this raised bit. So we'll just take the nut off here, discard the olive because that's what that raised bit is, it becomes the olive. Put the nut onto the tube, slide it up, you can see now that that makes the seal, tighten the nut up. And then here we've got the drain where we can just shove that down there. And now when it drips, it will just go down the drain. It's as 
simple as that. So, hopefully you've liked the video, hopefully you like the jet valve, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.